Excellencies, Ministers, Head of Delegation, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Om Swastiastu, and a very good morning. Welcome to the fourth session of the panel discussion of Indonesia-Africa Infrastructure Dialogue. Without further ado, I would like to give the floor to the moderator, Mr. Philips Fermonte. Thank you. Um, very good morning to everyone. Uh, welcome to this session number four uh, today on energy and mining, an area I believe uh, Indonesia and Africa have shared interests and still have ample rooms to deepen their cooperation. Now, as such, this session will address three broad questions. Question one, how Indonesia and Africa can collaborate in advancing sustainable mining. Two, how Indonesia and Africa can develop more uh, friendly renewable energy. Number three, Indonesia import huge crude oil from Africa and other uh, stuff as well. How can we utilize those into much more deeper economic cooperation? And to address these questions, we already have seven distinguished speakers, a uh, slight change from the original lineup that you probably have uh, the information before. The first speaker will be His Excellency Luhut Binsar Panjaitan, Coordinating Minister for Maritime Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia. The second speaker will be His Excellency Ohamadu Mahamadu, Minister Chief of Staff of the President of the Republic of Niger. Speaker three, His Excellency Muhammad Lutfi, Commissioner of Medco. Speaker number four will be Mr. Alnyo. He is the Chairman of Madagascar Oil, Madagascar. And then next, Mr. Taufan Ekonugroho, CEO Energy Mega Persada. Speaker six, Mr. Mokhtar Riza Palefi. He is the CEO of our PT Tima, the tin company of the Republic of Indonesia. And seven, uh, the addition, uh, not the least, Ms. Adinda Putri Bakri, CEO of the Energy Mega Persada as well. Now, without further ado, I'd like to invite Pak Luhut Binsar Panjaitan to share his thoughts on the topics of energy and mining and cooperation between Indonesia and Africa. The floor is yours. Uh, five minutes uh, for the speaker each, so we can have rooms for question and answer for the audience as well. Silakan, Pak Luhut. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have three slides. So, to be honest to all of you, uh, this is a uh, very, very good opportunity because I remember last year it was very good meeting, uh, Indonesia Forum, Indonesia Africa Forum at the time, and I learned more and more about this relation. I think. If you look at the speech of uh, our president yesterday, he keep talking about you know about the uh, brotherhood uh, between Indonesia and uh, Africa countries. And my background is military, and uh, I never uh, thought that I'm going to talk about economy today because I spent 22 years in special forces and also 32 years in the military until I retired. But I've been experienced also in many portfolio economy in the, mini, uh, in the, our, in the our government. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at also the uh, Asia Africa conference back to 1955, there's I think the ID, ID behind this. So we like to see more closer cooperation between African countries and Indonesia. So yesterday the president kept talking about the close cooperation between Indonesia and, and Africa. And my bilateral meeting also with several ministers from African country also, we are talking how do we can share, not in, in only Indonesia to invest over there, but how do we share our experience about infrastructure, about education, about many things. So this is, I think, a good opportunity for us. But if you look at also the last um, uh, five years, then our import and export from Africa is basically stagnant. See, the last year, I think, 
uh, 5 billion uh, uh, to Africa and import around the same amount from Africa. So how do we now move forward, make it bigger, you know, because uh, we export most of our export is uh, crude oil and some of the car, very little, but we import a lot of energy from Africa. Uh, beside oil and gas, Africa also has over huge potential mineral resources, which is I think we are interested to do so. We encourage also the Indonesian company, it's a private company. You see here some private company also doing in Madagascar oil and also in Mozambique and gas and others, you know. So I like to see that moving uh, uh, better and better in the near future. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as a conclusion of my very short remark, and there are three areas that we can talk. First of all, talking about the first international diplomacy, which is, I think, very important for us. Let's work together, you know. I've uh, been discussed also with the Senegal uh, minister this morning, with Cathy. They would like to see or maybe present our uh, team to uh, African conference on the 2nd of December. Uh, I think uh, on defense, we are also, yeah, we are the same le level, but we have a good and uh, strategic industry on the uh, defense. We like also to share with you. And I remember also about the diplomacy on the uh, palm oil. Uh, one of the Nigerian governor at time attend also meeting in Vatican with us. How do we work together, you know, to deal with the uh, European country on the palm oil? And second, a free trade agreement, I think very important for us. We don't have yet so far, so I like to in uh, encouraged to move uh, faster because been uh, discussed this over two years. Uh, the progress is like yo-yo, you know. Today move, tomorrow stop, and something like that. So, through this uh, conference uh, forum, I would like to encourage our uh, countries to uh, work together to move uh, uh, very fast. The third investment cooperation, uh, during two days conference, I think we see that a lot of opportunity that we can do together. We have not rich country like in a European country or like China or Japan or America, but I think we can work together with using our heart, using also our spirit, Africa, South, uh, Afri uh, uh, Asia Africa uh, spirit that could also generate something. I discuss also see the potential of World Bank can uh, finance some of project in Africa, that Indonesia may be to be a contractor over there, also with the Jap Japanese fund, pension fund, that we also we can do together. So there are so many other things that we can do together. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's move together. Um, if you work together and maintain our cooperation, and I will, like I mentioned earlier, I will send our team to Africa to have a look what we going, what we can do together and over there. Uh, at last, with the spirit of uh, Asia Africa Conference 1955, we can improve trade and investment relationship between Indonesia and Africa that will result in mutual prosperity for our people. Not only benefit one country or two countries, but benefit also Africa, because if look, Indonesia. If you look at the market, these two area, Africa and Indonesia, like 1.5 to billion people, huge market. Everything that we can share, I think we can bring benefit to both sides. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, <clears throat> Paluhut, and thank you for keeping up the time. Uh, there are some highlighted uh, issues that uh, His Excellency uh, Luhut Panjaitan uh, already uh, mentioned that the audience can later uh, ask questions. By now, I believe you've been familiar with the use of Slido. Uh, just like yesterday, you can just start, post your question through Slido. Now, uh, I'd like to invite our second speaker, uh, His Excellency Ohomadu <coughs> Mahamadu uh, from Republic of Niger. The floor is yours for five minutes. Merci. Je voudrais tout d'abord remercier le gouvernement indonésien pour l'opportunité qu'il nous donne de parler du secteur minier en Afrique. Je voudrais également remercier les organisateurs de cette conférence. Le secteur minier africain a été a évolué dans le contexte 
justement de l'industrie coloniale. Dans l'esprit de l'échange inégal, où euh, les ressources minières africaines étaient exploitées et transférées de manière brute dans les pays occidentaux. Les sociétés minières étaient à l'époque considérées comme des véritables enclaves. D'abord, le personnel était essentiellement expatrié, les propriétés de fonds étaient essentiellement euh, expatriées, les matières premières étaient importées de l'extérieur, les produits étaient entièrement exportés et euh, l'accès même à ces zones était pratiquement interdit aux populations locales. Voilà le contexte dans lequel l'industrie minière africaine a évolué. Fort heureusement, euh, ce contexte est en train de changer. D'abord, euh, au niveau continental, les pays africains sont venus avec euh, une vision commune qu'on appelle la vision minière euh, africaine qui a été adoptée en 2009. La vision minière africaine vise à intégrer l'industrie minière au développement du continent. Elle vise à faire en sorte que l'industrie minière soit ancrée au développement local. Elle vise à faire en sorte que l'essentiel des mines produise avec des matières premières africaines, produise avec de la main d'œuvre africaine et soit intégrée dans les chaînes de valeur africaines. Pour y parvenir, les pays africains ont pris des dispositifs législatifs, des dispositions législatives et réglementaires pour euh, adopter des codes miniers et des codes pétroliers euh, innovateurs. Ces codes prévoient d'abord une participation des États dans le capital des sociétés minières. Dans le cas du Niger, le minimum, c'est 10 Elle prévoit, Elle prévoit l'emploi de la main d'œuvre locale et euh, elle prévoit aussi, euh, en ce qui concerne le revenu qui est tiré de ces sociétés minières, qu'une bonne partie de ce revenu soit affectée aux populations locales. Les sociétés minières aussi doivent développer des programmes sociaux pour intéresser la communauté locale dans laquelle ils opèrent. Tout ceci rend l'industrie minière attractive et ancrée dans le contexte national. En particulier, euh, au niveau du Niger, pour euh, attirer les investisseurs euh, étrangers, nous avons adopté également euh, d'autres euh, instruments juridiques. C'est le cas de la loi sur le partenariat public-privé. C'est le cas également sur euh, les mesures que nous prenons pour faciliter l'installation des entreprises. Euh, nous avons fait beaucoup de réformes dans le cadre de notre programme Doing Business et ces réformes ont permis à notre pays d'être parmi les pays les plus réformateurs en Afrique. Notre pays a fait un bond de 32 rangs dans le classement d'un business de 2012 à 2018. 
ces opportunités, ces, ces, ces réformes donc permettent d'exploiter les opportunités qui existent en particulier au Niger. Et euh, les entreprises euh, indonésiennes euh, sont invitées évidemment à, à y venir. Nous avons un potentiel minier important. Le Niger est connu comme un grand producteur de l'uranium, mais il n'y a pas que l'uranium. Nous avons également euh, d'autres métaux comme euh, le fer, le cuivre, le titane. Nous avons également beaucoup de potentiel dans le domaine pétrolier et euh, évidemment euh, l'exploitation pétrolière qui est récente au Niger offre des grandes perspectives notamment donc pour des entreprises comme l'Indonésie. Il s'agit d'un terrain nouveau donc pour le moment il n'y a pas beaucoup d'affluence des compagnies étrangères. C'est donc l'occasion de participer. Nous, avons, nous sommes en train de construire un pipeline qui permet donc d'exporter ce pétrole-là vers les pays côtiers. Comme vous savez, le Niger est un pays continental. Mais avec ce pipeline, donc maintenant, toutes les possibilités d'exploitation pétrolière sont valorisées. Voilà ce que je peux dire à titre introductif et je reste ouvert pour vos questions. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now, I'd like to go to the third speakers, and uh, I'd like to remind the audience that you can post your question through slido.com. The third speaker is Excellency Mohamed Lutfi. Uh, the five minutes is yours. Thank you, Chairman Fermonte. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Excellency Ministers, Excellency Ambassadors, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for the opportunity, and I think uh, this is a I embrace the discussions and the understanding that we need to build between Indonesia and African nations. Uh, we live in the new era. I think we live in the disruptions bigger than James Watt when he founded Steam Engine. We live in a new trading system. Five years ago, ten years ago, when I served the government, uh, we were still talking about competitions. Competitions create a lot of winners, but a lot more losers. We live now in collaborations. That means everybody has to contribute to an effort. And we also uh, live with the same challenges between Indonesia and African nations. The first two mega trends that will happen between the two countries are like this. Indonesian and African nations will consist of three billion people by 2045, a third of world populations. 81% of these 9.5 billion people will be in the middle class, while the Africans in Indonesia are, can be in the bottom of the pyramid if we don't do our homework. The second part, because of the explosions of populations, the scarcity of commodities such as uh, boron, such as carbon, uh, nickel, uh, gold, and copper, will be extremely scarce. And to control that, the fight will be fearful. And with the new technology of EV, electric vehicle, on top with uh, renewable energy, the requirement for those commodities becoming really, really tight. The, the McKinsey and World Bank study shows the growth or the, the price for those commodities will not grow, will grow exponentially. So then we have to take care of our natural resources. Study shows by OECD, a country that does not have a value-added program will not, cannot go outside of their poverty. And a study shows also a country that has more elderly then young generations like African nations and Indonesia will not skip the middle income trap. Therefore, Indonesia may be coming into first, Indonesia will come as the first of out of these problems. 
Indonesia in 1998, GDP per capita was $463. Through industrialization and value added, today Indonesia last year was inducted into middle class for $4,000 per capita. And the challenge for Indonesia is by 2045, Indonesia need to grow seven times to $28,000 per capita and in order for Indonesia to get out of the middle income trap. The value in that is how we change and we deliver a value added system for our basic commodity. The trading system that I mentioned to you before, it was competition in the past and collaborations in the future. My thought is the collaboration in the future is has to be opening the market and create investment and we can jump into industrializations. Indonesia, I represent a company that is very active in oil and gas. We have some operations in Africa, and we also very active in copper and gold. Indonesia, Medco, is ready to sit down and collaborate together. Indonesia is ready to open the market through free trade agreement, and Indonesia ready to work together with African nations as part of the new trading system of collaborations to have two countries sit down and create prosperity for both countries. So my president was mentioning about brotherhood. This is the essential of brotherhood, creating prosperity for our people, and we have to skip the poverty of the past. And Mr. 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 Chairman, I think this is my opening remarks and would love to go into depth into discussions. I thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Paul Lutfi. Now I'll go to the fourth speaker, uh, Mr. Alnyo. Chairman of uh, Madagascar Oil uh, in Madagascar. Uh, five minutes is yours. Yeah, His Excellencies, uh, Ministers, His Excellencies, Ambassadors, His Distinguished Guest. Madagascar is, uh, is a country of about 22 million people with a huge oil and gas resource. USGS, which is the US Geological Survey, US government, estimated the country has 10 billion barrels of recoverable oil and 166 TCF of gas, which is equivalent to about 24 billion barrels of oil. It, it is an emerging oil and gas country as the whole East Asia, I mean East Africa is emerging. As some of you know, there's been major discoveries in offshore uh, Mozambique and offshore Tanzania in gas. So this is part of a proven hydrocarbon system. In fact, my Mr. Luft, Lufti on my right is heading a company called Metco, uh, which has interest in uh, offshore Tanzania gas. So the issue facing Madagascar as an emerging nation is, is uh, to look at the development model the development of oil and gas model. And I've had discussion with the government and ourselves as Madagascar Oil. We looked at Indonesia's model. Indonesia has had 50 year history of oil and gas, of successful oil and gas development. In fact, Indonesia uh, created the PSC regime, the production sharing regime, which is used in many countries, including Madagascar. So, we looked at Indonesia as a model, as a collaboration to, to uh, develop our own field and also in terms of the country's uh, energy policy. Now specifically as to Madagascar oil, uh, our concession size, area size is over 6,300 square kilometer, uh, which is bigger than Brunei, and our oil resource is about 2.5 billion barrels. Um, and we are in the process of developing that oil resource. But what's unique about the oil resource is the very low sulfur. Uh, our crude oil has a sulfur of 0.3%. And as some of you know, the International Maritime Organization mandated global shipping by 2020 that all ships should be uh, using very low sulfur fuel oil with a sulfur content of 0.5%. So Indonesia being a maritime country, we see also potential in the future to export uh, our fuel oil, very low sulfur oil, to the Indonesian ship shipping sector. 
So going back to the collaboration that I talked about, there is a very strong uh, uh, basis for Madagascar and Indonesia to collaborate as Madagascar develops its energy policy and specifically as uh, various companies are uh, uh, producing oil and gas. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, now, <clears throat> I'd like to go to the next speaker, Mr. Taufan, uh, Econo Groho. Five minutes is yours. Thank you, moderator. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am representing PT Meg, Meg, uh, Meg, Energy Mega Persada. I'm here with actually my partner, Ms. Adinda Bakri. Uh, thank you so much for giving us the time to speak. I would like to give also the time for her, and then after that, uh, I will speak for maybe two minutes. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, moderator. everyone. Um, I'm here to represent uh, PT Energy Mega Prasada. In short, we call it EMP. EMP is an upstream oil and natural gas company that has operating areas in Indonesia and Mozambique. It was established in 2001. Its business activities include exploration, development, and production of crude oil, natural gas, and coal bath methane. We operate working, our operate working interests in eight oil and natural gas properties, some in Sumatra, East Java, and Buzi in Mozambique. Our oil and natural gas covers area of 22,000 kilometers squared. We serve both for power generation through the National Electricity Company, or PLN, as well as for feedstock for industrial needs. For our, for our Buzi near com commercial gas discovery, we have um, significant upside exploration potential and it amounts to 80 trillion cubic feet prospective resources. Our ship has journeyed a couple days ago actually and um, hopefully before October, it will arrive there and so the drilling program can be started. We also have started um, EMP mining overseas. We want to focus on graphite and rare earth elements. So graphite is the main material for graphene, which is an alternate, alternate or substitute for lithium batteries, so it will be very good for um, electric cars. It lasts longer, and uh, Mozambique Graphite Reserves ranks top five in the world. We also would start mining in the rare earth elements, which is, has a very um, high usage for cellular phones and also defense industries. So rare earth elements discovery on Mozambique has been proven that it has um, more than uh, one million ton. So EMP with local Mozamb Mozambique company intends to explore, appraise, and mine both graphite and rare earth elements in Mozambique on top of um, its gas and oil projects. Talfan, you want to continue? Thank you, Linda. Um, at this time, I would like to extend based on my experience. In Indonesia, there is a saying, if you don't know, you don't love. If you don't know, you don't love. So uh, we want to thank the organizers in creating this forum so that we can have more discussions on the opportunities ahead. Looking back on our experience in Mozambique, we had a lot of problems, a lot of communications problems. And on this forum, I would like to underline the importance of the foreign ministry, especially the diplomats. I really like to congratulate on, or thanks 
His Excellency Belmiro Jose Malate. Please stand up, Your Excellency, the Mozambican Ambassador for Indonesia. As well, our Indonesian Ambassador, Mr. Tito Baptista, His Excellency Tito Baptista. Uh, both of you have helped us a lot in managing the difficulties, especially in perception, in communication, in understanding on how to move forward. So on this forum, I would like to accentuate that the role of the ambassador especially and the foreign ministry in helping us the businesses to move forward, working together with the new countries, especially for us, EMP, we have eight blocks, seven, eight oil and gas blocks, seven of them are in Indonesia and one in, in Mozambique. And we are seeing that the potential in, in Mozambique is quite vast and advanced. And without the help of the His Excellencies, I don't think we will be able to make it this far. So thank you so much for all your help, all your understandings, and all your support in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Taufan. Now, last but not least, uh, Mr. Mokhtar Riza Palevi of the uh, Tete Tima. Floor is yours for five minutes. Thank you. Uh, Pa Philips, uh, His Excellency Ambassador, His Excellency Minister, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Um, PT Tima is the second largest tin producer in the world. Um, like Pa uh, Lutfi mentioned, that the, the, the changes in the technology now also change, change the consumption of mineral in the world. Uh, the electric vehicle, for example, will increase the consumption of copper, nickel, and also tin, and also rare earth, rare earth element in, in the futures. Um, starting last year, we have started the exploration program in Nigeria, in Plateau State. Uh, we have a concession around 15,000 hectares, and then we have done the exploration for around 2,500, and then we already completed the mining plan uh, to start the mining, and also we are planning to build uh, the smelter uh, starting from the end, uh, end of this year. Um, during the exploration, we, of course, we have, we have, we face uh, challenges but I think is uh, with the support of the the government of Nigeria and also from the embassy of Indonesia in Nigeria, I think we can resolve the the, the issue like the safety issue. Uh, the other issue is, I think, is about the uh, skill skilled worker. But we during the operation program we will also transfer. Uh, some technology to the local people, and then they are helping us. And I think this is the, the, the most important thing for the mining processing is the uh, power, the electricity. Uh, because the, one, the, the, the cost of electricity is one of the main uh, cost in the pro mineral processing. Um, Thing is, if we, if we if the Nigerian government could provide the cheap the, the cheap energy cost, it would be better for us uh, to operate the mining processing. We hope uh, the smelter will be start to operate by end of this year, and uh, we'll be very happy to see the other opportunities to develop the mining concession in other region in Africa. Thank you, Pat Formas. Thank you. Now, while waiting for the questions uh, on Slido to come up, uh, we have a unique uh, lineup of the panel today. We have two government officials and about four from the private sectors. Pat Lutfi, also unique because he served in the government and then now in the private sector. So I, if I may have questions from this kind of perspective for the two government officials, uh, Pak Luhut and His Excellency Mahamadu, what are the challenges for Indonesia and Africa to move forward from government's perspective? 
and then how we can uh, move forward and, 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 and resolve that challenges. Uh, but you only have two minutes <laughs> to respond, yeah. please. I, I think, first of all, we have to build uh, trust. That's, I think, very important, yeah. But right now, I think uh, it's there. I mean, the trust between our two uh, area, two continent, I think, uh, I mean, Indonesia and uh, Africa, much better than before. That's number one. Number two, I think the free trade agreement is very important for us. Free trade agreement, if you don't have this one, I think this could be uh, some, uh, you know, handicap for Indonesia. Number three, um, mentioned already by, you know, s s several speakers from Indonesia, that we are willing and already doing some activities in, like in Madagascar, Mozambique, and Senegal, and some other countries in Africa. So we just now, how do we explore? Uh, the role of the government, basically, like my military background said, uh, just prepare the beachhead. The beachhead already there by, you know, doing this one. Now we encourage the Indonesian uh, private sector to entering Africa um, bigger and bigger, but also to encourage the African countries to entering Indonesian uh, market. Uh, so we understand that 1.4 or 5 billion uh, population in these two areas, it's a huge market for uh, both of us. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Luhut. Excellency, Mamadou. Merci. Je crois que ce qui est d'abord uh, important, c'est le renforcement des, des relations diplomatiques. Uh, Quelqu'un l'a dit tout à l'heure, le rôle joué par uh, les ambassadeurs est extrêmement important. Donc, il est extrêmement important que l'Indonésie et l'Afrique aient des présences physiques d'ambassadeurs et de représentations diplomatiques sur le terrain. Indépendamment de cela, l'autre aspect extrêmement important aussi, c'est l'accompagnement du gouvernement avec des financements innovant. Les opportunités existent, mais ces opportunités doivent être accompagnées par des financements et des garanties. Euh, les investisseurs euh, étrangers, les investisseurs privés ont ceci de particulier, c'est qu'ils ont extrêmement peur euh, du risque. Et donc, euh, L'un des aspects les plus importants, c'est qu'au niveau des pays africains, que les pays adhèrent au MIGA, qui est euh, la garantie multilatérale de l'organisation euh, de la Banque mondiale. Euh, notre pays, le Niger, a déjà adhéré et d'autres pays euh, également y adhèrent. Ensuite, euh, il y a des financements innovants et des modalités aussi d'intervention qui sont en train d'être mises en place. Des réformes juridiques et institutionnelles ont été mises en place de façon à ce que, par exemple, dans le secteur de production de l'énergie électrique, que les entreprises puissent s'installer comme producteurs indépendants. Cette opportunité n'existait pas avant. Maintenant, elle existe. De même, euh, il y a dans le cadre euh, du partenariat public-privé euh, la possibilité de faire euh, des projets en ce que nous appelons BOT, Build Operate and Transfer, et également Build Own and Transfer. Euh, ces opportunités aussi sont des opportunités nouvelles qui, si elles sont saisies, accompagnées de financements, peuvent permettre de renforcer les relations entre l'Indonésie et l'Afrique. L'Afrique est en train de bouger, notamment avec la création de la zone de libre-échange continentale. Cette zone de libre-échange continentale, si elle est renforcée, permettra justement aux opérateurs économiques de voir grand c'est-à-dire d'avoir un marché de 1 milliard, 200 millions 
de consommateurs plutôt que d'avoir des marchés morcelés dans 54 États avec 84 000 km de frontières. Et ce mouvement-là est en train d'être accéléré puisque, comme vous le savez, le traité relatif à la zone de libre-échange continental est entré en vigueur et euh, les organisations euh, régionales euh, d'intégration s'activent à le mettre en œuvre. Voilà un peu ce que je peux dire par rapport à votre question. Merci. So for finance for this uh, project, for instance, through World Bank, uh, this is also maybe one uh, option. I'm going to see the uh, President World Bank uh, next month in D.C. I would like maybe to bring this issue and also to meet my good friend uh, from Jebik Maida to discuss this. And I've been discussed also with the uh, Excellency uh, Lutfi about this possibility. So there are other models that we can explore before we don't touch this, but right now we are ready here, so let's move together. I think with the spirit of uh, Asia Africa Conference 1955, we can look for many, many solutions for this. Thank you. Thank you, uh, For the panelists from the private sectors, what do you see uh, what are the challenges that you face on the ground? Some mentioned about the communication on the, the need for transfer of technology, skilled workers, and so on. But other than that, what other kind of uh, problems that you are facing, given in the audience, we have friends from uh, African countries as well, and uh, we, we face similar problems in Indonesia when it comes to investment coming. Of course, there are domestic problems within Indonesia, but now, given the fact that you are the ones who are investing in Africa, what are the challenges that you see the most there? Please, uh, maybe from uh, pa, uh, pa Nyo first, and then the continue Pak Reza and, pa, uh, and Bu Adinda. Yes, please. Yeah, Two I minutes think each. as uh, His Excellency, the Minister and the Chairman of this forum have indicated finance is always an issue, and in our case, uh, the issue relates to logistic, logistic road and harbor development because uh, we intend to export the uh, production. I believe uh, His Excellency Minister of Finance of Madagascar is here in the audience. Hello, sir. <laughs> Welcome to Bali. <laughs> so. As Minister, His Excellency Mr. Luhut was saying too, it's important to have to institutionalize the financing aspect. So what I would like to suggest to the Minister of Finance, Madagascar, is perhaps Madagascar should look at, uh, you know, uh, creating a Madagascar Development Bank, and possibly also uh, together with East Africa and Indonesia start thinking about an infrastructure fund. Right? As we all know, private equity is much bigger than public sector money, and there are successful models of such infrastructure fund. So, so that, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the main problem is logistic and uh, infrastructure. Thank you. Pareza, please. Uh, I think it's uh, the, the basic uh, and basic concern is um, I think we both of us we have to understanding more about the culture mm -hmm. and then we face the, the, the problem and then we try also we uh, we have to uh, trust each other uh, by having that I think is the, the, the communication issue can be resolved easily. Uh, the other uh, concern f uh, after we do exploration in uh, Nigeria is uh, the, reg the regulation is there. 
but I mean the execution, the, the, the speed of the process. For example, at that time, we trying to bring our drilling equipment, but it's stuck in the port for like one month. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, because of uh, the, the process is not, is not to, uh, I mean the speed up of the process is a bit problem, so it delay our exploration for one month. And then I think it's the, the speed up of the exploration is very important for the mining company and also for the uh, oil and gas company. So it, because we, this, this, the, the faster we complete the uh, exploration, the better for us to have the mining plan. Uh, in, in the modern infrastructure, we are lucky because from uh, the, our mining sites to the port is there. I mean, it's already uh, cons uh, the railway available, so this is not it's not really a big issue. But I mean, in the I think is a uh, port will be the the the, the next uh, uh, concern for us. Uh, I mean, the the speed of uh, the the pro the, the the effective process in the port for export will be uh, much, much better for us. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before I go to the other speakers, there are questions on Slido from the audience. Uh, <clears throat> there's a question for, uh, for, for the AMP. In mining industry, <coughs> nanotech R&D can give a cutting edge. What is the current level of nanotech in EMP, if there's any? Would transfer be possible? Uh, can you repeat that again, sorry, the question? The question, oh, uh, the sorry. Topic. Can you repeat the question okay. again, sorry. Uh, in mining industry, nanotech R&D can give a cutting edge. What is the current level of nanotechnology in EMP? Okay. Would transfer of tech be possible to the African countries where okay. you are operating? Thank you so much one minute, for the question. Okay. Uh, before answering that question, uh, in regards of the other questions about the problems in communication, our main problem at that time was mostly perception. Mm -hmm. Nobody in Africa knows who is PT Energy Mega Persada is. <coughs> Everybody knows maybe the Chevron, the total of the oil and gas industry. Uh, in our case, it was once again the help of the ambassadors in communicating mm. to the other ambassadors. In this case, I would like to also uh, welcome Mr. His Excellency, Indonesian Ambassador for Mozambique, Mr. Tito Baptista. Okay. Let's give him a round of applause. Ah. Terima kasih banyak, Pak Tito. Um, in our certain case, the Mozambican government did not know who EMP is. So at that time, we cannot communicate it uh, effectively to the government. But with the help of our ambassador talking with the government of Mozambique, it makes us easier. easier. And afterwards, we were supported by ENH and INP to have the capabilities communicated effectively. In regards of nanotech, I think we are welcome of the transfer technology. We are all new on this business, but we are very strong in mining as a group. We have gold mining, copper mining, uh, uh, coal mining, and we want to have uh, to ensure that when we operate in Mozambique or any other countries in Africa, we also have transfer of technology. We actually communicate this intensively with His Excellency, Mr. Malati. Uh, we are also in discussion of any other business potentials, since with the oil and gas, we have already been established. We are communicating about the transfer technology, maybe of the garment industry, since Mozambique has a strong cotton, but not yet the technology supporting the cotton into the garment. We are also in talks of uh, potential in cassava, we are, have a quite high technology in processing cassava to energy. We are in talks of that. So um, one thing that we would like to um, accentuate once again is that once a business is established in a country, we can expand it. And I think that's uh, good for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Ibu Adinda, I would like to ask something. 
very quick. Um, I am very um, happy with uh, the trust that we have with the Mozambique family. I think that is very important. And then, um, as we were all discussing about time, time is also very essence. So you have trust with the vendors and our partners. I think those problems can be handled more effectively. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Palutvi, would you like to comment on the financial side that have been raised by Paluhut and uh, His Excellency Mamadou? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Indonesia, actually, may be one of the first countries in the world that developed the PSC, the production sharing contract. And it has a lot of flaws, but we learn from it. And after 40 years, now they are expiring right now. And Medco, the company, we acquired world-class uh, world assets from this process. We have two world-class assets. That is one, the uh, shallow water in Natuna Sea, uh, about about 5 TCF uh, a reserve. And the second one is the uh, copper and, and gold mine in Sumbawa, which produce around 1 million ton of copper uh, cathode every year. Um, this is the transfer technology has been set. We had no problem of financing it. Now, like I said, the challenge is how we can expedite our experience to Africans, friend and African nations. We don't want you to do what we did wrong. And that learning curves we can share together. But then again, you know, when companies like Medco, like Tima, or like EMP, we are not ConocoPhillips. We are not ExxonMobil. We are not British Petroleum. You know, we, are don't, we don't have the muscle that they had. But at the same time, we're not as greedy as they are. So we can sit down. We can sit down and we can develop in new trading terms, that is collaborations. PT Tima, you know, this is one of the second largest tin company in the world. When, we, when, when they went to Nigeria, they went and invested in the value added. We, we invested in the smelter. We don't want to take the basic commodities. When we take on basic commodities, or when whomever take the basic commodities, the countries that we took that from will not skip poverty. Study shows that. OECD study shows that. So then, therefore, therefore, like I said, you know, we have a lot of pro a lot of uh, a lot of issues because we don't have a lot of muscle, like financing, like um, discounting and deducting the risk to go to countries. We don't want to name countries. Medco had experience also when countries went to war. We lost our pants. We lost a third of our equity there. And it makes us, how I said, hesitate to go. Now we have to see also a lot of challenges. But Paluhut, if you can lead, this is a forum that we can sit down and exchange understandings. Uh, and this is a forum that probably we can create prosperity together. We're not, we're, we, we would like to, to share our experience with our PSCs. This is one of the most successful. And yet, after 30 years, 40 years, they just left us. And therefore, with, if we can sit down together, we knew, Medco understood, that when we acquired a world-class assets, we, have, we, had, we had no problems in financing it. It's a billion and a half, it's three billion, it's four billion. We can finance it, and we have experience doing it. And we hope that we can sit down in the in the win-win situation, in collaborations. Collaborations issues is that I need the African nations to sit down and give us something in order for Indonesia to give us something to collaborate, and we can create and fight poverty together. I thank you. Thank you, Pak Lutfi. Pak Luhut, you would like to ask? Yes, I just want to emphasize, uh, Excellency Lutfi, Pak Lutfi said, you know, we experienced you know, a lot of bad things before, you know. So we, don't, we like to share this experience. We don't want to see this thing happen in Africa. So some Western countries just 
came in and then invest, dig, 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 and they export. They don't see any added value. We don't want to see this thing happen in Africa. So I encourage Indonesian company to see or to program uh, how to make added value in Africa. So both sides can benefit of this. If you look at now uh, brother and sister from Africa, this is young entrepreneur like Dinda, like, uh, you know, this from the MP. They're willing to go there and to invest over there. But they promised to us also to see the added value. That's my friend Pa Lutfi also, Medco. Yeah, they, they, have, they don't have muscle like, muscle like you know, like a big company, but they have a good heart. They want to share. We don't want you to experience like we had before. So this forum, this forum, not only talking about finance, but also sharing our experience, bad experience before. And how do we make better in the near future? So not only to make benefit or to make create a profit in Africa, no. We like to see also how do we can move together? How we can bring prosperity together? They always talking about SDGs, but they don't, they forgot something, SDG number one about poverty. We experience poverty. How do we tackle the poverty? We, have, we grow our palm oil. Palm oil, they don't understand that this could bring down poverty in this country, Indonesia. Above 10% now, down to 9 point something percent. But the developed country embargo this, penalty this. But Africa also has palm oil like Nigeria. Let's work together. I may say, let's fight together. We have to fight our right. For this is because of the poverty issue in Africa and Indonesia. So if we work together, not only talking about a big, big company, talking about big, big uh, mining, etc. There are so many other issues, ladies and gentlemen, brother and sister. Let's work together. We work with heart. Again, I mentioned muscle. Yes, we don't have a very big, um, big muscle, uh, but we have a very big heart. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you, Pak Luhut. Uh, there's one question for Pak Lutfi again. Uh, maybe you have uh, some insight on this. Instead of importing crude oil from Africa, do you see a possibility for Indonesian companies to establish refineries in Africa? This is, this is a mind-boggling issue for Indonesia. And I've been tackling this, the trading terms of oil. I don't know if you know, Indonesia right now has a very big trade deficit. Uh, we, we, ha we, we produce about 780,000 barrels a day of oil, but we import about a, mil a million, a million and a half of oil products. That means the value added, the value added for the last 40 years, we didn't do it correctly. Because of the population growth is very high, uh, you know, we have around 250 million people. We have around 350 million people by 2045. So the number of importing for oil is, will, be, will grow very big. The problem is we cannot just build refinery because if the, the oil is still imported and we only have a limited number of oil, the number of the trade deficit is still there. So now we're looking at how we can we, we can import oil in rupiah terms, so it will not hurt our balance sheet, our trade deficit, but at the same time, we can, we can invest in where oil is still very big. So then, this is the issue now, how we find oil abroad. You know, we would like to take a look in countries like Russia, but if we can sit down and reduce the political risk reduce the, the financial risk because of an understanding of collaboration, win-win situations. We promise Indonesians are not like countries that would like to preach about you know, how you do things. We're not like that. Paluhut is a four-star military general. 
And, you know, I don't know if you know, Paolo, but we have the Brigade 17 out of West Java. It's very famous when they do the peacekeeping because we, we honor the countries that we visit. You know, we work very hard. We are very quiet. And at the same time, you know, we're very friendly. So we would like to share this. And Indonesia right now is in a great deal of producing one million barrel of oil, uh, oil product every day. And if a country can show that abundance of oil reserve, we would like to build the refinery there. If we can tweak together how we don't have to import in dollar terms so there is no exposure in our balance sheet, we can do business, gigantic business together. If we were talking about a billion, a million barrel a day, that means an investment close to $28 billion. And I'm pretty sure if we can have a common understanding, we can create and fight poverty together. I need it, you have it, we share the, 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 the productions, and we share the burden together. Create and fight poverty together. Thank you. Thank you, Balutvi. Uh, last question for Pak Riza of PT Timah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, briefly in the holding room, you are kind of uh, discussing the, the, the possibility of uh, building smelter in Africa. Uh, would you elaborate that a little bit here? Um, Just one or two minutes. Yeah, we, we, we built smelter because we would like to have value added <coughs> of mineral from the place that we mine, we exploit. Uh, by having value added, I mean the, 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 the benefit, the economic of the project and also the economic for the local people will be much, much better. And the second thing is uh, having the value added product like in, tin ingots and then we will register the tin ingots on the LMA brand. Mm -hmm. So this is very important that, you know, after having the LMA brand, meaning that the world acknowledge that the product has coming from, say, Nigeria, the, the country mm -hmm. that we uh, do the mining. Yeah. Thank you, Pariza. I think that uh, kind of uh, show some commitment uh, from the Indonesian companies investing in, South, uh, in, in Africa, uh, like pa uh, Luhut already mentioned about bringing added value and transfer of technology and uh, uh, kind of a sharing with the local government and local people in Africa. Now, <clears throat> time is uh, about to end. If I may highlight three issues that have been discussed throughout the questions and uh, through the presentation of the, our distinguished panelists. Number one, if I may, kind of a, a point that we can take home is that trust is very important for Indonesia and Africa, and we do have modalities, given the fact that we've been, we have a long history back to 1955 that Paul Hood alluded to, and now I think with the kind of a different model of doing business between our, our two continents, Indonesia and Africa, that uh, we are not that, uh, those big companies, but uh, I think Indonesia and Africa shared some values about uh, doing development. Number two, then cultural understanding is, is very important because we are not only connecting businesses or companies, but we are connecting people. And uh, maybe this is subject for discussion in the other forum or the other session that maybe people-to-people uh, -people relations need to accompany all this business and private sector's uh, involvement in uh, our relationship. Number three, institutionalizing the financial mechanism. I think the, uh, one area that we need to explore more in order to move forward and uh, to cooperate more in the, in the future. Last but not very least, but I think this is very important, that our relationship should, as the speakers have been uh, uh, trying to emphasize, is that it has to be benefiting both sides so that we do not repeat the experience of Indonesia that Pak Luhut already mentioned uh, in the past with uh, other countries or other continents, but. Uh, Indonesia and Africa would collaborate in different manner. So please join me in thanking all, all of well, Okay, yeah, please. If I may share one, one little point before you uh, 
close this discussion to brother and sister from Africa. Uh, there are four criteria to invest in Indonesia. Sorry, I'm using military terminology. I don't care who are, whoever you are. <laughs> if you want to invest in Indonesia, I said to them, number one, you have to bring first-class technology. I don't want Indonesia to be, you know, using the second-class technology because of the environment. Number two, you have to do technology transfer. We don't want Indonesia to be only marketing of the other countries. We like to see this thing happen also in, in Africa. Number three, we have to do it B2B. I don't want to see Indonesia get problem debt to GDP or debt trap because of the G2G uh, uh, form. Number four, we have to use as much as possible Indonesian laborers. Maybe the first four years and five years, we cannot provide enough engineer, but then at the same time, we have to uh, improve the quality of people in Indonesia in that area, especially, so they can replace the foreign workers over there. Because the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, poverty. We like to reduce the poverty and bring more and more middle class and bring prosperity to the people of Indonesia. I think this is the dreams of so brother and sister in Africa. So let's work together with this kind of spirit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please join me in thanking and give a big round of applause. And I hope this is uh, as beneficial to me as also to you. Uh, now I'd like to close the session and return the microphone to the MC and the organizing committee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Phillips.